So welding up the uh, back panel. Hino bus. I don't, I don't know what the people say, Hino or Hino. Hino and our dealers have been Set up a bit of fiberglass filler here. Righto, so today we're gonna remove all the old sicker flex that was around the aluminium on the top, so we'll show you there. So I've already made a start on it already. So we just got a uh, just got a grinder there with a uh, the wire brush thing on it, and that removes it quite easy. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get stuck into removing all that, and then we'll um, sand it all up, finish off sanding all the uh, filler work, and then we can get it in primer. Let's get into it. Uh, we've just mixed up a bit of fiberglass filler here as well as we've got a couple of little rust spots and things just underneath where I put the aluminium sheet where the old windows used to be so we're gonna patch all that up with some bit of fiberglass and there was a little ridge there as well so we're gonna fiberglass that and then we're gonna put some body filler over the top and we're gonna hide the ridge that's there which I'll show you which you've probably already seen anyway but we'll just give you another show of what I'm talking about and we'll um, get stuck into it. Alright, so this is the little ridge I was talking about. There's a couple of little little rust imperfections and things in there. But we want it to be um, all nice and sealed. So we're gonna fiberglass this ridge up. Make it nice and strong before we put some body filler over the top. So as you can see, there's like a little step bit here. So we're going to fiberglass this join here, where the two meet. That makes it where your seams are waterproof and a lot stronger than body filler. So this stuff, uh, probably about 10 or 15 minutes will be dry, depending on how much hardening you put in it and also depending on your weather. So what we're going to do is I've already done a lot of major repairs to this bus prior to you guys seeing it. Um, well, I've sanded the whole entire side of the passenger side. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix up some primer and we're going to prime that whole side up today. So that's what we're going to get done. I'll show you how to mix the primer. This is the primer that we're using. It's just a, a generic high build primer. This ratio is mixed four to one. Now you can choose whatever uh, thinners you want to put. You know, you can go 5%, 10%, 20%, whatever you prefer. So I've got these little mixing cups, makes things a lot easier. So you can see all the measurements on there, on the cup. 
because it's pretty straightforward. So what you do is, however much you want to mix up, so you'll go to the first number. So you've got four, and then the next number four is a hardener, and then you've got obviously 10, 20, or 30% of your thinners. So that's basically how these mixing cups work. They're pretty straightforward. So that's what we'll do. We'll, um, we'll mix up some high fill, and then we'll get into spraying. Now we're doing a full side, so it's, we're gonna need a, a fair bit. So we'll just mix it up to six. That's it. And you've got your hardener, so you, you buy your high fills in kits, and then you've got a hardener as well, which tells you the ratio on there, which makes things a lot easier. So we're going from six, the next line of hardener goes up to the six. Beautiful, happy days. And now I want it to flow out a bit better, so what we'll do is we'll just put some um, some thinners in. So we'll just go um, go 15% with this one, to make it a bit easier. We'll put a couple more coats on it then. So that's it. Basically, you just mix that up pretty thorough. Um, any high fill gun that you want to spray with is going to have to be equivalent to 1.5 up to a 1.8 mil tip that you'll need to use to spray it. Now you can use anything less than a 1.5, you'll need to thin it right out, which is not what you want with high build primer. You want to be able to build it up nice and thick. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to use a 1.8 mil spray gun uh, you can get them pretty cheap $160 for a decent spray gun to paint the high fill on and don't forget obviously these are chemicals you will need to wear a spray mask so we've got a brand new one here in the box which will set it up these I can't remember how much these are but they're not really cheap but you can get a lot of cheap spray masks these days they're good for general purpose painting where this is basically just general purpose it's only a primer so that's what we'll do finish mixing that up we'll um, get stuck into building the spray mask now these are pretty pretty straightforward so got some cleaning wipes in them got your mask pretty easy pull it all apart you've got your paint gas filter which will be in this sealed one here so you get these open so that, that's your gas one for all your fumes. This one is your particle collector. So these just clip together, like so, like that. Then you also, I've got another particle filter here that you can put in your mask. These Sunstrom masks I've used for years, these are these are pretty good, in my opinion. You can use the 3M ones with two filters on the side, but I prefer this, it's just the one in the middle. So that, that little filter goes in there. Doesn't matter which way it goes, it's only a particle filter. Stops the paint from getting in there. That clips on there and then you basically just push this into the front of your mask that's it done good to go and it's got a little adjustment on the side you can just adjust it to your head to whatever suits you need bang it on happy days let's get into it now as i said yeah we just probably can't hear me Gotta put the cap back on here. One point eight, happy days. And that's it. Now, as I said, I've made this very thin, so should give us plenty of build once you put a few coats on it. Yeah. Let's get the spray. All in high build primer. Now I put a couple of extra coats as you might have seen on a couple of different areas where there's a bit of filler like there where I put a relief cut. So I put extra cup co coats there just to um, make it easy when it's all sanded and get rid of a couple of pinholes and things that are in the filler. But that's it. One whole side is basically all done, ready to go.
Alrighty, so that is nearly the whole side of the bus door is all done. That one was a bit of work. As you've seen, it had a couple of um, holes and things in it, a bit of rust. We fixed it all up. So that one's good to go, ready for primer. Now we're getting stuck into this big door here. She's got a fair few dints in it. She's a bit twisted, she's a bit dinted, a bit rusted. So we're gonna pull that off. Pretty easy. There's just a bolt on the inside there, and just a well, there should be a clip on there, but there's obviously not. So that's uh something I've got to fix later on. It looks like the parts are not in the bus. Anyway, that's something we'll deal with later. But uh, yeah, it's just basically two bolts. There's supposed to be a clip there, I'll show you. There's supposed to be a clip there like that and a bit of a bush in the middle, but uh, we'll worry about that after when we put it back on. But yeah, we're gonna get stuck in a fix in this door. This is gonna take me a few hours, but uh, let's get into it. explain something to you about the first skim of body pillow now you're never ever going to feel you know nine times out of ten you won't but um, you'll never feel you did first off so just try and get it you feel it in there nice and tight to feel the majority of the dent first and all the imperfections you know obviously if you've got a small repair as you would have seen the dents before there was just a line dent through there and things I've tapped it out as best as I can you want to go out of your means of the repair so you want to you know, bring it out so where, where it's nice and smooth and there's no dints, that's where you want to bring your repair out so that when you block it all, it is all even and flat. Now, as I said, you, you nine times out of 10, you won't always get the repair first go when you skim it. So just get it in there nice and tight so it's just nice and easy. Sand all that off and then if you've got to add some more, you, you can later on. It's pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, there's still heaps more of this dint that we've got to fix up, but you know, you can't mix too much filler at a time. Like this one here, it's taken a bit longer to go off and cure because I, I didn't put much hardener in it because it's in the sun and I wanted that flexibility to be able to smooth it out before it starts to cure. So that's why that one's taken a bit more time to go off. But we're gonna have to add a bit more filler into this later on. But for the most part, majority of it's all fixed and it gives us a nice flat edge to work with to add filler here and there and we'll be able to see the highs and lows. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna wait for this to cure. Still a little bit stick. Might take another hour or so. I should put a little bit more hardware in it, but uh, because it was in the sun, I didn't really know how fast it was gonna go off. But that's it. We're gonna get stuck into it once it dries. Right, there you have it. That's basically nearly the finished product of the finished repair. I put a uh, light skim of a uh, fine fill over the top just to get rid of some of the pinholes and things that you get when you uh, use the normal filler. So that, that's just going to finish it all up nicely and uh, make it nice and smooth and then it's ready for um, primer. We're going to buzz the whole door down with uh, 240 grit on the orbital sander and then that's it. It's ready for primer and then that whole side of the bus is all finished and it's time to move on to the back and get on to the other side. Righto, that's it for this episode. We managed to get this side all in primer. I managed to put a few relief cuts in there. You can see some black sicker flex that I put in there, which is in the expansion joint. So that's pretty durable stuff for flex and things like that. So we'll sand all that off and you won't see any of that mess. It'll just be all in that groove. We've also got a piece of aluminum rub rail to go over the top there to dress it all up nicely. So we managed to get all this side in primer. So that is a relief. I can now move on to the other side. So coming up next week, we get stuck in to the driver's side. Now we've got a few repairs we're gonna do and we're gonna fix a rust spot, which I'll show you there. 
and we want to get this side all in primer just like the other side and then basically she's ready for paint now we've purchased a few things as well which we'll show you i've got um some new tail lights coming and i've ordered a few hatches and things as well now with the roof um look at something exciting different uh, than what i'm used to doing uh, we're not really going to paint the roof with uh two-pack paint we are going to try something different we're going to do like a rubberized roof but we'll um we'll definitely show you what that's all about and we'll show you the process on doing that as well we have found a new product that we're gonna we're excited to try we have a bit of a dilemma now i've called hundreds and hundreds of windscreen people and all it is, is just cut flat glass i just need someone to come out here and install the brand new glass all i need them to do is get flat sheets cut the glass and just install it for us i'll have it all painted prepped up ready to go but it seems to be too hard it's call one person and this person refers me to another person call that person that person's too far away uh, you will have to call this person that's closer in your area call that person send them an email send them photos just like everybody else and it's just a vicious cycle hey 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 double hate and at this point i'm at wit's end with it and i'm ready to get the glass and cut it myself so if anyone knows anyone in the melbourne area metro area to cut glass for a windscreen on this bus leave it down in the comments because that'll help me out a lot so we hope you enjoy what you've already seen so far stay tuned for next week make sure you hit the like subscribe button so you can stay up to date with the new adventures coming along with this bus and make sure you leave a comment about a name for this thing because we still have to come up with a name for that and make sure if any of you know someone that can do cut glass for this bus leave it down in the comments as well and that'll help me out heaps so we hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for next week's now 